this tutorial, we're going to go over the steps to sync a mind test world on GitHub. Uh, it's roughly eight primary steps to get set up. And once you're set up, then there's just two of these steps that you repeat. So um, what you're going to see up front might seem a little bit complicated, especially if you're not used to working with Git. Uh, but again, most of this is just set up. Um, the, the last uh, step is the one where you'll repeat. And I'll, I'll illustrate that more when we get there. Um, first thing will be to create a GitHub account, if that's where you're wanting to end up publishing these. You can actually use any um, uh, Git hosting service of your choice. There's GitLab. Um, there's other uh, revision control systems as well, but um, I won't get too much into those. Uh, GitHub has a really big network effect right now, so it's worth learning, uh, particularly if you're interested in uh, exploring the world of open source software. So first thing, once you're signed into GitHub, is to uh, create a new repository. Uh, and this is going to be a repository, is just like a bucket where you keep things, uh, specifically, you know, code-related things. Uh, there is a uh, question as to whether or not, you know, a mind test world could be considered as uh, code. Uh, it's a little bit gray, uh, but in general, I think this is a um, a good case for revision control and GitHub. Um, is a good place to share um, creative resources that are uh, you know amenable to revision control. So what we'll do is just create a repository. I'm just going to call it Mind Test World and give it a description. Um, I'm going to make it public so that anybody can see it and. Uh, I'll let uh, GitHub initialize the repository with a readme file and a license. The license is really important to let other people know what permissions they have with the resource. If you don't specify a license, uh, essentially the uh, entirety of copyright law applies to your work, so people don't have ex explicit permission to even um, really share or use the work, reproduce it, or make derivatives. So, uh, for particularly for mind test world file, where as soon as you run it, uh, you're creating a derivative work. Um, it's just important to select a license. The unlicensed that I've selected here essentially dedicates this to the public domain. So there's no copyright restriction. Uh, we'll now create the repository. And so GitHub does a couple things for us. Uh, one is it created the license file. Uh, which we selected the unlicensed and uh, readme which basically contains this text uh, rendered here uh, it does those with one commit a commit is just a, a chunk like a change to one or more files that you want to preserve uh, so you you commit to that change and each ch uh, commit has a unique um, identifier so here we are our repository mind test world file has one commit and one branch this is uh, important to illustrate really briefly um, that the branch run is master for a mind test world uh, that you're just simply sharing. You won't have to learn too much about branching or worry too much about branching. Uh, but it's worth noting that right now we're on the master branch, which is a convention. Uh, so that's we've um, created the step one repository on GitHub. Now we're going to go into mind test and just create a, a basic world. So I've got mind test here. I'll just create one called GitHub so we know where we're working and then I'll launch the world. I'm just using a simple throwaway password here um, as part of our world file there's going to be an auth.txt I don't know if we can omit that uh, for security uh, but for simplicity I'm just gonna use one of my throwaway passwords so we can look around here um, we've got this world created I'll now just exit back to the menu and that's gonna shut down the game server and preserve the state of that world um, it, while you're in the world is continually changing so github or sorry git would be looking at all those changes as they occur and wanting to uh, ask you to preserve those so we just need to shut down the world for whenever we take this snapshot so I'm running on Ubuntu Linux here um, your steps on Windows or Mac will be slightly different but basically you need to go into your shell and change directory to the mind test folder uh, worlds and the world name was github 
and if I list the files out we can look around here we see uh, this auth text that contains the username and an encrypted password so there is a degree of security here if you're concerned about that but again just use a simple throwaway password uh, it's possible to exclude this auth text file um, from github uh, if if the world will still work th that way I'm not sure exactly it probably would uh, for now I'm just going to commit that and it contains several other files including this map file which is the primary um, world so now I just need to tell git that this folder I'm in this uh, mind test world's github is a repository so you just initialize it and git initialize what it calls an empty git repository for the fact that when I look at the status of this git repository um, it's not tracking any of the files yet uh, but it knows about them so it's looked around let me make sure I'm on script here real quick yeah so basically what we want to do is um, now we want to commit these files uh, to do that you actually add them uh, and I'll just tell it to add everything in this folder using the dot so git add will add one or more files the dot says just add this folder so add here uh, now if I say git status again now we'll see that we went from red to untracked files to green that these changes will be committed so essentially all of the files in this folder I'm going to clear the screen so now that we've uh, got those files tracked and we're ready to commit them uh, there's a shorthand I'll just show um, that says commit all the files and I'm going to have a message uh, initial uh, this is the this is the most important command, the one that you'll run most frequently. The, the commands so far about initializing the repository, you only run that once, basically. So now that I've I've created a an initial commit of the world file, we can see that eight files were changed and 494 lines were inserted. Um, so now we're working in a a local repository I'm on my laptop here and we've also created a uh, kind of a remote repository on github and we just need to link the two we need to tell my local laptop about this github repository so that it can send the changes there uh, and so git calls those remotes when you have a local computer a local repository and you want to send them to some other place that other place is remote and we need to run this command once um, so I'll run it manually what you do is on github in your repository you grab this link here and you can copy it and that's the link we're gonna tell git about so I'm gonna say git there's a remote that I want you to add I'm gonna give it a name you can name it anything you want but I'm just gonna name it github for like just simplicity and then you paste that actual github link again this can have any name but we'll just uh, for consistency name it github okay now git knows about this this remote um, one other thing is that if I look at my local branch I'm on the master branch if I go over here to GitHub, I'm all, the GitHub has created, you know, the master branch exists there. And what we need to do now is also link these branches. You have repositories which, you know, contain a bunch of files, but within those repositories, you might have a lot of people working. So software developers work in what are called branches so that our work doesn't collide. It's kind of like trains going down the train track in parallel so that trains can work at different speeds or have different junctions. Um, and in fact, when you look at, there's a visualization for um, Git projects that looks like train tracks. I don't have it uh, enough collaborators in this repository to show that. But what I need to do is tell Git that my local um, branch is linked to this upstream master branch. So I'm just going to copy this 
and go over it real quick. So I'll say, hey, get um, this branch that I'm on. We're going to set the upstream to the GitHub origin master branch. And my local branch is also called master. The syntax is a little funny, but basically you can copy and paste these. And there's a good guide on GitHub for adding remote. And Git will even tell you this command. Okay, so there's a little bit of a snafu there. Essentially what I did is I got an error, and Git is pretty explanatory. Um, and what I had forgotten to do is let my local repository kind of look around the remote one. So it really didn't know that this... this branch existed. Um, but it looks like it's it found the branch and has now linked it up with the remote master. So what I was saying earlier might have um, been unnecessary. Let's let's see now what happens if I actually pull. Let me clear the screen. And I'll say git pull. What the pull command does is tell us um, git to bring down the changes from the remote. So I'll say git pull GitHub. No, I do need to run this command, sorry. So now I can tell it git branch set the upstream to GitHub master for my local master. Uh, so that was the original command. I had omitted a step. Sorry for the confusion there. I need to add that to the show notes. So now I can git pull. And it's going to bring down uh, the changes. Uh, whenever you pull the changes, it wants you to, um, it's going to create another commit. So on Ubuntu, it brings up my default text editor, which is Genu Nano. And it's saying this, this branch is going to merge into my local branch. So I can basically just tell Nano that I uh, want to accept that by hitting Control X. And now I have two new files here. Uh, the license text and the readme. You'll only really be pulling um, every so often with this uh, mind test world. Mostly I believe it'll be a push to the remote. So currently the GitHub still only has these license files, but my local branch also has license readme and all the world files so in order to get those extra files up to github I will say git push I'll tell it to get push to github uh, which isn't necessary because of this step but since I'm pushing to github I need to authenticate with my username and password and that's it now if I refresh this page, everything is set up. Uh, from here out, the process gets a lot simpler. Those, f those um, initial commands were mainly for setting things up. Um, but let's uh, see what the process would be like for um, pushing changes um, based on game time. So if I go back into the game, And I just grab something and put a couple blocks down. And I exit to the menu. It shuts down and saves changes. Now if I hop over to Git, the Git repository, we'll see that several files changed. The map has changed a little bit. My player, I changed location. The environment has changed, the time of day. And for some reason, the authentication um, files changed. So what we're going to do is, um, you know, again, Git is pretty good at telling us 
what commands to run. And if I just run that command, it's going to bring me again to this prompt. Uh, this time um, I'm editing the commit message in uh, this GNU Nano, um, the shortcut that I showed earlier where you use the M and append the text directly is a little more convenient. I use it um, more often, but changes. Basically, you type just a little bit of text there to describe your change. In GNU Nano, you hit Control or Command, I guess on Mac, X to exit. It'll say save the changes. You can hit yes and just hit enter. Again, the get commit minus A brings up the text editor. If you just use M and put your message here, it's just a little bit easier. You save some keystrokes, so that's the way I prefer to do it. Uh, but anyway, so we we made one commit world changes that had four file changes, uh, and it tells you a little bit more about those changes. We'll just now push those to GitHub. GitHub, and now we'll see that world changes were effect. I'll do that one more time just so we see the process, and then I'll wrap this video up. So again, we're just going to make a couple changes to the world. Whoops, sorry about the flowers. <laughs> and exit to the menu. Um, go back to get everything and the message all to say is uh, four files changed I'll push those after the commit everything should now be on github with the accidentally crushed flowers commit okay well thank you very much for your time i hope this is helpful um, feel free to um, ping me on youtube or uh, on github if you have any uh, questions about this there are some additional tools that make git a little easier to work with if you're not really comfortable with the command line um, and i can gladly introduce a couple of those. Sometimes they're platform specific, so uh, what works on Windows might not work on Mac, so I just thought the command line is more universal, and it's good to learn anyway. Okay, well thanks again for your time, and I hope this was helpful.